Our second scripture can be found this morning in the Gospel of Matthew, at chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It can be found on page 23 in the New Testament section of the Bible. Hear God's word from Matthew 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Growing up in San Diego, I lived only 10 minutes away from Mission Beach Amusement Park. The classic ride at the park was an iconic white wooden roller coaster. As You ascended the first hill, getting ready for that off-the-cliff plunge on the other side. You had to decide on three things as you went up the hill. First, were you going to raise your hands or were you going to grip onto the safety bar in front of you? Second, were you going to scream on the way down the other side? though that was usually involuntarily decided in the moment of descent. And third, were you going to close your eyes or keep them wide open through the ride? Some people chose to hunker down in the corner of the car with a death grip on the safety bar, closing their eyes, holding back the scream, while others chose the arms waving, piercing scream, eyes wide open, method. I think the second group had more fun than the first group. The people gathered around Jesus that first Palm Sunday also had three decisions to make. One, they had to decide who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Two, they had to decide will we raise our hands in celebration? Not unlike what we had to decide at the opening hymn. Will we raise our hands in celebration? Or will we keep them down at our sides? And three, they had to decide, will we keep our eyes open? Will we keep our eyes open? Jesus entered into a Jerusalem that was preparing for Passover. Pilgrims and travelers were beginning to pack that city. Jesus approached, seated on a donkey, surrounded by a cheering crowd. The people shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The crowd lined the streets with their cloaks, and they cut branches from the trees and placed them on the streets as well. Jesus came into Jerusalem in a grand procession. The crowd called him Son of David, and in so doing, proclaimed him to be king. 
Jesus accepted this title of son of David, knowing that indeed he was sitting on the throne of David, Israel's great king. Matthew makes the kingship of Jesus clear by quoting from Zechariah 9. Look, your king is coming, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus rides into Jerusalem as one coming to a coronation. But he is not a warrior king coming on a horse. He is a humble king seated on a donkey. The crowd's first decision is this. Jesus is king as the prophets proclaimed. Having decided this, the second decision was relatively easy. Will they raise their hands and join the celebration? Yes, they will raise their hands, for the king has arrived. They will wave at Jesus the king who rides by on a donkey. He is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus accepts this acclamation as well that he comes in the name of the Lord, that he is the one who will do the work of God in their midst. But it will be a different work than the crowd expected that day. His power will not be a worldly power. His authority will not be a worldly authority. He came not to replace one earthly empire with another earthly empire. He came to bring the kingdom of God. He came to set people free from the bondage of sin. Later that week, he would wear a robe, but it would be a robe of mockery. Later that week, he will, will wear a crown, but it will be a crown of thorns. Jesus will be the king, but not the king the crowds might have expected that day. The crowd was excited and ready for a celebration. They believed that Jesus had come to do the work of God. Who were the people in that crowd on Palm Sunday? Who were these people that proclaimed Jesus as king? We don't know for sure, but maybe some of them were in Galilee earlier in Jesus' ministry. And maybe some of them heard Jesus begin the Sermon on the Mount with these words. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If so, they would be among the people whom Matthew tells us were astounded at the authority of Jesus' teaching. Maybe some of the people in the Palm Sunday crowd might have been present when Jesus healed the blind and cured the lame and then fed 4,000 people. If so, they are the ones that Matthew tells us, praise God, the God of Israel, for the, witness, for the miracles they had witnessed. Like basketball fans, ready to stand and raise their hands and cheer their team on to victory, this crowd wanted Jesus to be their victor, to go for victory. They were ready for the work of God, in the past, especially in the time of King David, God brought freedom from oppression and renewed prosperity to Israel. It would be reasonable to think that God would do this again, that in Jesus, God would set them free from oppression as Moses did and bring them prosperity like David did. They hoped that victory by Jesus would bring back the good old days. So the crowd waves their arms and shout, Hosanna, which means God saves. They were celebrating God's deliverance. But the third and key question is, will they keep their eyes open? Will they keep their eyes open when what they will see later in the week is the cross? Will they be able to keep their eyes open so that later they can see the glory of God when Jesus is raised from the dead? The crowd had the right information. Jesus is king. He is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. He is the prophet. 
But will they be able to keep their eyes open even when Jesus does not meet their hopes and expectations? Some of the Passover pilgrims that day may have been with Jesus back in Galilee. And some of the Passover pilgrims on, Good, on uh, Palm Sunday might be the ones that would be in some of the crowds yet to come. In a few days, there would be another crowd gathered in Jerusalem on Good Friday, a crowd that would shout for Jesus to be crucified. Maybe these people were disillusioned by the meekness of Jesus. What kind of a victor is it that doesn't stand up and fight? Maybe they did not understand the kingdom of heaven is not an earthly kingdom. And maybe this Good Friday crowd closed their eyes when Jesus did not meet their expectations. It is possible that some of the Palm Sunday crowd were also present several weeks later on Pentecost. Pentecost was another time when pilgrims from around Israel gathered in Jerusalem. And that day, there was another crowd. With the gift of the Holy Spirit, 3,000 people became believers in Jesus that day. A crowd that once again celebrated God's salvation. I would like to think that some of the Palm Sunday people kept their eyes open through the time of the cross and the resurrection to the coming of the Holy Spirit and that they had the opportunity to see what Jesus came to do, to bring forgiveness and real life to all who follow him. We do not know if any of the same people were in any of those crowds, but we do know that 11 of the 12 disciples were present at each of these events. We know these disciples kept their eyes open. They continued to look to Jesus and they were able to see the salvation in Christ. I hope the Palm Sunday crowd kept their eyes through the roller coaster week of Holy Week, through the tragedy of the cross and the wonder of the resurrection, so they could see the salvation of God. Here at Hamlin Park Presbyterian Church, we proclaim the salvation of God in Jesus Christ. The question we can ask ourselves this Palm Sunday is, do we have our eyes open to Jesus as we go through the roller coaster of life? Life will not go according to our expectations. There will be surprises. There will be hills and valleys we cannot anticipate. Twists and turns that catch us off guard. Of course, we would like God to meet our expectations and have things go our way, but God has a greater plan than we do, and God invites us to be part of the kingdom and the abundant life God gives. When I became a Christian in college, I was very thankful for the peace that God gave me through Jesus Christ. But I still continue to experience significant difficulties in my life. Life did not go my way just because I believed in Jesus. I soon learned that following Jesus did not guarantee that good things would happen. I learned that God was present through those tough times, however. Something else I learned early on in my Christian life was the importance of loving one another. But as as time went on, I realized that Jesus' command to love one another was more than just a nice idea in which we'd all feel good about each other. I began to see that loving one another day in and day out is really hard. I had times and still do have times when what I really wanted to do was just live my life for myself and not have to worry about loving other people. But then I learned that when I love people and use my gifts, it is the greatest experience in life. This is a small example, but a very real one. In my college church group, we were assigned prayer partners by drawing names out of a hat. The day we did that, I looked around at the group and I thought to myself, I could be prayer partners with anybody in this group. 
except one person. And so I put my hand in the hat, and I drew out a name, and you guessed it. It was that person's name. I could have avoided that person and said, I'm too busy. We'll have to do it later and later and later. But God said, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. And we became prayer partners. And we didn't become best friends by any means. But we did become friends in Christ. Life does not go according to our expectations. But God has a greater plan. God wants to show us the way of Jesus Christ and how Christ makes God's life happen in us. Are we willing to let Jesus lead lead us to a greater understanding of who he is and what he offers? Are we willing to to keep our eyes open and follow Jesus wherever he leads us.